why quarterback Spencer Rattler is the perfect replacement for Derek Carr. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here off the bench with T-Bob. Jacob Hester, this video was from right after the NFL draft when the Saints took Spencer Rattler. We have had multiple videos on my take on that. We're going to listen to their take on Spencer Rattler and the backup situation uh, with the Saints, and we're going to react to it like only I can do. It's crazy. I'm seeing, <laughs> I saw a video... I saw a video today as I perused, you know, what, what I was going to watch, what I was going to react to, what I was going to deliver uh, to y'all's front doorstep. And I saw some videos that were like the top 10 undrafted free agents the Saints have signed. It's like, holy Christ, God, dog. I mean, I have to, I, mean, I couldn't imagine talking about some undrafted free agents or whatever's going on out there. So we're going to keep it to the fun picks. Spencer Rattler, the superstar of the future, the franchise. We're going to hear, I think the only show that I haven't listened to talk about Rattler is uh, T-Bob and, and Jacob together. Oh. Here's where I think the Spencer Rattler thing is probably most exciting. And I don't think I'm saying anything. Um, I don't think I'm saying anything mind blowing here. Right. Or actually, actually I'm, I'm going to go to a Nick Underhill line that I felt was, uh, was very funny. He said, Spencer Rattler is the most exciting fifth round pick in Saints history. Yeah. Which, agreed. on well, one hand, has a lot of Nebraska is the best three and nine team yes. in, in NCAA history energy to it. But guess what? Nebraska really they was the were. best three and nine yeah. team. Like they they really actually were. They played all ranked teams. They barely lost every game. Like they, they were, like, so close to kind of being good. Well, in the same way, Spencer Rattler, it's not too often that you get a fifth-round pick that... So we know Rattler, we know the pick is good, right? We understand the value. We understand all that stuff. We are now, what, two weeks removed from the draft? Something like that? Someone uh, double-check my math there. I think we're two weeks away from the draft. So... Now, this is the time where you start to move away from draft grades. You start to move away from the actual draft itself and the value and all that stuff. Now, that kind of wanes away. Now, we're going to start slowly getting into training camp, OTAs, practices, whatever else, the, philo the philosophy, the vision. You know, what's going to actually happen? How are these draft picks going to kind of slide into the team? And what's the future of the Saints look like? Okay? The Rattler pick. So, when we talk about the Rattler pick, we'll talk about it that way. We're not going to talk about, hey, the value that we got for a, a, a fifth-round pick where the guy should have probably been the second or third rounder. Was once maybe thought that he could be the number one pick in the NFL draft yes. where a fifth-round pick that has better arm talent than anybody does in your current quarterback room. And and yeah. and, and and also, when you look at some of the other quarterbacks, whether it's what, uh, Jake Hayner, um, Who'd you draft oh, from Colorado State back in the day? Garrett Grayson, Garrett Grayson was in that number. Ian Book. Like, Spencer yep. Rattler is on a different level yes. talent-wise no than all of those guys, and it's not even particularly close. And I know we've had this conversation a lot, but oh, first Whoa. crack of the day. Sorry. Whoa. Uh, Sorry. It's always – <laughs> what a phase to pause it on. It's always controversial whenever the voice cracks and you're above the age of – you know, 17, because you're always wondering, like, what the hell just happened? I had a voice crack last night. I was watching the double overtime New York Rangers uh, game. I have a futures ticket on the Rangers to win the Stanley Cup. And I was cheering on the Rangers, and I, and I let I let go, of, like, a let's go, boys kind of thing, and it cracked. And I, I kind of like, oh, shit, what the hell just happened? You know, I'm way too old to have voice cracks. Now, now I, I'm hesitant to click play. Because of the face that T-Bob's making here, and he, I mean, this is this is a man in distress, is what this situation is right here. This is a man, eyes are rolling rolling in the back of his head. He's he's mouth agape. Uh, he looking into the heavens, just begging for the sweet release of death, is what this face is making. So, I mean, I hope he, I hope he pulls out of it. We'll we'll see. That that's not all right. But when you go when you go cough button. So y'all know most most uh, radio has that cough button right there. You click that. That's when you can let it rip. Uh, it's basically just like you know cancels out your audio. When you when you're hitting the cough button and you're still hearing the cough, which I assume we heard through Jacob's microphone, that's when you know it's a legitimate cough. It's deep deep into the lungs. Probably could be pneumonia. But maybe the I have a real unhealthy sounding cough going, guys. 
I don't feel sick. Uh, it just feels like a few too many beers and darts, you know? I respect that. <laughs> I'll tell you this right now. I respect the hell out of that. I don't know when this uh, video is recorded. I don't know if it dropped on a Monday. I don't know if it dropped on a Friday. I don't know. I'm not totally sure. Uh, but I respect the hell out of that. You roll into work wherever you are, whether it's a radio station, whether it's a you know corporate gig or whatever, and you got a cough and people are saying, are you sick? And you say, no, I'm not sick. But your boy was hitting it last night. Now, he said beers and darts. Spoiler alert, he ain't throwing anything at the wall. Okay, He's talking about beers and he's talking about ciggies. Respect. Respect. Get after it. You know, get after it. Uh, man, I mean, you know, I've, we've all been there where you show up, you're not feeling up to it. You're hurting your, your, you know, put it on the night before, whether it's a Boda box, whether it's a you know, six pack of uh, truly unrulies, whatever it might be. But shouts to T-Bob for, I just noticed the socks and the sandals. Y'all can see that. So he went full Jesus. I mean, he's full Jesus. Socks, sandals, instead of turning water into wine, it sounds like he turned water into a pack of Marlboro Reds in about uh, 19 Paradise Parks. But uh, I but, love darts. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't do? He loves beers. Uh, but uh, I don't know if same. we're talking about the same darts. But Spencer Rattler, the... Mm, that was tough. Tough for the producer there. You can tell the producer is uh, must be younger because I think you know darts is a, a lung dart is an old school term for a, for a cigarette. Obviously I knew what was going on there. T-Bob, she's, she's talking about throwing bullseyes. That ain't what he's talking about. The other thing about him is that compared to every other, like kind of major quarterback in this draft or, or the, the other major ones, the big boys, um, he is the one that most got forced to basically play up the last couple of years. Uh, like maybe say for Drake May, all the other big, big quarterbacks had a supporting cast that was going to be better than their opponents almost every single week. Um, and, and how about this? Just to put some numbers on it, Spencer Rattler was pressured, uh, the pressure rate that he suffered in South Carolina last year, fourth most in the entire... Yeah, the offensive line was terrible. Entire nation pressured on 201 snaps, sacked 43 times. I think that's over the last two years, the the 43 times. I think 101 of those came in the first game against North Carolina. Uh, it was <laughs> unreal. I mean, just relentless, the amount of pressure that man was under. And and yet, he still did some impressive things. So this is all to say, this is far more talent than your normal fifth-round yes. selection is. No and and it's, 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 I think it's surprising that he fell to you uh, when you look at what kind of what the draft hive mind thought of him, and and I don't know where his journey ends, but there is actual potential, Jake. I think for him to maybe be. Yeah, let me explain this. Like, you know, this is something that I, I think I look at a little differently than some people look at it. But like, there certain players get drafted, and certain players are on the roster, and they're not actually there to be a ba like a starting quarterback. They're not actually there to be your next franchise quarterback. And this is something I've talked about with the Jake Hayner thing. When when a quarterback is drafted, you can pretty much see the vision. You can pretty much see their plan. And a good way to look at like a timeline or whatever else is to look at their contracts. If you if a quarterback is drafted and there is not a direct line to playing, or worse, if there's a hard block to playing, then they probably they're probably not part of the vision. You know, like they're probably just holding on to a roster spot or they're probably just a practice guy or they're probably just, you know, just kind of there to sit just to, to fill up a chair and sit in the room. Some players, and this is quarterbacks, this is wide receivers, this is running backs, but quarterbacks are uh the the most of what I'm talking about because there's only one on the field. Right? There's only one quarterback. Even even though there might be only one running back on the field, running backs rotate all the time. Quarterbacks don't rotate. And quarterbacks don't rotate in. They don't rotate out. It's one guy. It's one leader. It's one game plan. It's one voice. Right. So you can kind of tell the track of a team or how they're viewing their quarterbacks. Jake Hayner, this was always my point with Jake Hayner. Hayner was drafted into a bad situation because they had Carr. There was never, ever, ever, ever going to be a situation where Hayner – was going to get a chance to start over Carr. It was never even going to be echoed into the locker room because you don't even want that kind of like that idea out there because you're going to lose the locker room for your $150 million guy in Derek Carr, right? So Hayner, his only 
real role is hang out, hold a clipboard, clipboard, look good in practice, kind of do your thing. And then if 14 people get hurt, you may get a chance to play. But even if that happens, once car is healthy, we're still going to go back to car. You know, and it's unfortunate, I guess, for some people, but it is what it is. And you see that all the time in the NFL with guys who just kind of go from team to team to team. They may start here, they may start there, but they're never truly looked at like a starting quarterback. Rattler now is on the perfect track to be a starting quarterback. He's he's the he's the complete opposite uh, of what I'm talking about. He's the complete opposite. I got a hat situation here with the hair, but he's the complete opposite of what I'm talking about because Rattler is now on the perfect track, the perfect timeline with Derek Carr. Rattler comes in at 23 years old. Rattler needs to develop. He need, he has the physical tools, but they need to be developed. Good news. The Saints have exactly two-ish years to develop a quarterback. Rattler's contract is going to work perfectly too because he's going to have his rookie deal go four years, and half of that is going to be development, and then the other half, he's going to, he's going to get a chance to play. So the vision is there. And like people have asked me, do you think he'll beat out Kellen Mond? Who cares? Do you think he'll beat out Nathan Peterman? Who cares? Like Peterman and Mond are doing what I'm saying teams do with bringing players in. Kellen Mond and Nathan Peterman have 0% chance to prove that they could start in the NFL. If, if Nathan Peterman goes... 77 for 77 with 12 touchdowns, no interceptions in preseason. Guess what Nathan Peterman is going to be doing in week one? Sitting on the bench, right? Nathan Peterman could have a 6,000-yard preseason. Come week one, Derek Carr is a starting quarterback because of the contracts, because of all that. You know, we don't have to get into it because of Nathan, who Nathan Peterman is. So whether it's Mond is the backup, whether Peterman is the backup, whether Hainer begins as the backup, whether Rattler begins as the backup – is all kind of moot. It's kind of all, it's a moot point because the plan is right in front of you. The plan is Derek Carr is the starting quarterback in the New Orleans Saints for at least the next two years, I would say. Spencer Rattler is the future quarterback of the New Orleans Saints for the next two to four years. He is, the, that is the plan. He is the vision unless something crazy happens like the Saints get the first overall pick, blah, 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 and we, we, we land a generational talent. That could change things. So in two years, two seasons, we will first start to see, okay, is the transition happening? Is, are we ready? For, is Rattler ready for to take over? Very similar to like Patrick Mahomes, Alex Smith, very similar to Jordan Love, Aaron Rodgers, where there won't be this battle. There won't be this like where Rattler's trying to beat out Carr and Carr's trying to beat out Rattler. It's going to be this nice, easy transition. That's that's the Saints' plan. It's obvious. It's out there. So don't don't worry about Mond. Don't worry about Peterman. Don't even worry about Carr, Rattler, and Hainer. All you got to worry about right now is how good can Derek Carr be for the next two years, and then you need to worry about is Spencer Rattler ready to take over in about in probably two years. A starter in the NFL one day, which yeah. you can almost never say about a fifth round quarterback. So a lot of people go back and they point to his second year starting, his sophomore year. At Oklahoma, it's like, ah, oh, man, this just wasn't the guy that we thought. He had a monster freshman year. You go back and you look at his sophomore numbers. He threw for like fifteen hundred yards, completed seventy five percent of his passes, eleven touchdowns, five interceptions. It's not a bad year. So that was that. Uh, that was the year that Caleb Williams yes, replaced yeah. him, right? And so, like, even that, like, he completed seventy five percent of his passes, and then he goes to South Carolina, and he doesn't fall off a cliff, and he got better actually this year from last year. You look at the totality of his stats in college, he throws 77 touchdowns, 32 interceptions, throws for almost 11,000 yards, right? So it's not like, man, this guy was uber talented coming out of high school. He had one good year in college, and then he just kind of fell off a cliff. When you actually look at his stats and you watch the film, he was pretty consistent throughout his college yeah, career, yeah. certainly to the things that you're talking about, really running for his life. I mean, he got beat out by Caleb Williams. Like, that's, that. that is not, you know, that's not exactly – something to be ashamed of, you know? And if I, I remember, if I remember correctly, I think Oklahoma struggled to start the year and that's why they made the quarterback change. So it was more about them losing and, and less about uh, Rattler just being terrible. So I, I'd also think about that. Life, the last two years at South Carolina, but certainly last year, 
So last year, behind one of the worst offensive lines in the country because of injuries, they were down to third teamers in a lot of spots. He still throws 19 touchdowns, only eight interceptions, 3,200 yards. And, and I mean, if you go again, you know, we love New Orleans on football, and we'll, we'll talk to Nick under a bit later today, but he had some highlights attached to it. And, yeah, there's some – there, there's some very impressive things in there in terms of some of the throws that he's able to pull up under pressure. Now, uh, obviously, it's not a perfect pick, right? I mean, he's in the fifth round for a reason. There's- he he, he kind of is a perfect pick, honestly, because he, and, and, and this is another part that kind of gets confused, is where I say, like, look, this guy was the number one quarterback prospect coming out of high school. This guy was the consensus favorite to win the Heisman. This guy was the consensus favorite to be the first overall pick in the NFL draft. I say all that because the skill set is important, right? When you have a player who you are developing, a player that is a developmental player, and he's got a special tool, like a special skill set, special tool set there, that's exactly what you want. Because you're thinking, like, let's let's pretend, let's go all the way back to Jamarcus Russell, okay? Jamarcus Russell has one of the worst rookie seasons we've ever seen in Oakland. Let's pretend that Oakland cuts him. Okay, let's pretend that they cut him right there after his rookie season. And let's pretend some other team picks him up. Even though he just showed you he had a horrible season, even though all that stuff, you're thinking, all right, I have to harness something here. I have to I have to work with something. I have to, to create something out of this. You would be excited at that because you're getting all those tools. No matter how many interceptions he threw, no matter how much uh, studying he did not do, how much film tape he did not watch, you still have a guy who can throw 80 yards. You know, you still have a guy who's 6'5", 250, whatever he was at the time. Like you still have all that. And now it's up to you to do something with it, right? I, I, I think about like, like uh, creating like, like a clay statue. Players like Jamarcus Russell, players like Spencer Rattler, uh, you know, players like Caleb Williams, they have more clay to work with. They have more to work with to make this statue because they have more physical attributes or physical ability. You know, even a guy like uh, one of my commenters brought, brought up Matt Barkley. Matt Barkley, consensus number one uh, quarterback in high school, consensus, you know, all that stuff. Barkley's physical tools weren't that great. Like what he was doing physically was not the same as what you would say Cam Newton did physically or Jamarcus Russell or even Spencer Rattler. You know, like being able to have those physical tools when you're, being, when you're a developmental quarterback is huge. And that's why I love this pick so much. Because every single part of it fits into the most perfect puzzle you could possibly make. The perfect puzzle is Spencer Rattler needs to develop. The Saints need a quarterback that needs to develop because the Saints have no use for a quarterback in the next two years. Oh, and also you have this developmental player who just so happens to have a ton of skills on which you can develop. So it's like this triple threat Bermuda Triangle perfect storm shouts to Mark Wahlberg of what you want in a in a quarterback. Oh, and the cherry on top, the cherry on top is that he's a fifth round pick. So you didn't have to waste anything. You you didn't have to you, to waste a first rounder, a la the Atlanta Falcons. The Atlanta Falcons are the opposite, right? The Atlanta Falcons are the perfect storm in the negative way. They drafted a quarterback that they had to play immediately. They drafted a quarterback that doesn't need development. But they have Kirk Cousins who has to play right now and who they paid a ton of money to. They should have drafted someone like Spencer Rattler, someone who needs to sit for two years while they deal with this quarterback they paid a lot of money to, which is exactly what we did. There's still a lot to work on in terms of processing and everything else. But again, I think the overall tagline on Rattler has to be uh, just how exciting the potential ceiling is, right? And he might not be good. Like he, he, he's a fifth rounder for sure. He he might he might not work out. It might not be a, he, it may, might not be a thing, no doubt about it. But you can't let those results get in the way of how exciting the opportunity is right now. Like if he doesn't work out, if it all goes to hell, if he's terrible, if we end up you know with different quarterback in three four years, totally fine. But that doesn't change how positive the fit is. That doesn't change how perfect the situation is. That doesn't change the potential that he has right now. That doesn't change. Don't look at me like that, Jacob. That doesn't change any of that. We're taking a shot with a what I think is a very high EV play is what this is. This is a this is I mean this is getting eleven in blackjack. 
You get 11 in blackjack, you double down. You're thrilled to death. The potential is there. You're excited. You double down on 11, you may get a, a two, and you may be sitting on 13. Trust me, it happens to me all the time. It happens to me way more than I get a king. But just having, like, doubling down on 11 and getting a two, ending up with 13 and losing, you don't sit back and say, like, oh, that was dumb. I doubled down. I should have never been excited. It's okay to be excited at the potential. It's okay to be excited at the front end. It's okay to see the vision, right? The vision of doubling down on 11 is I'm going to get this I'm going to get this king. I'm going to get a queen. I'm going to get 10. Boom, I'm going to have 21. I'm going to double up my money. That's what life's all about. You're excited. Bring over two more, you know, two more vodka sodas. Bring over a couple darts for my friend T-Bob. You know? Like like it's okay to say I'm excited about the potential right here. I'm excited for this plan. I'm excited for this vision. I'm excited for the next couple of years. I'm excited for OTAs and training camp preseason to see what he can do. I'm excited simultaneously for Derek Carr to lead the Saints the next couple of years to see what he can do. I'm not excited for Kellen Mond and Nathan Peterman because they suck. Like that's that is where we should be. That's exactly where we should be right now. And 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 look, we'll know because you have a new coach coming in, so you got a clean slate situation. Yep. And it's going to be what you. Peterman, Jake Hayner, Kellen Mond, and I feel like I'm missing one. Derek Carr. And De- well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yes, yes. No, I'm talking about Peterman, Mond, after, Hayner, after, and Rattler. Yeah. Uh, Derek Carr. But, like, those are quarterbacks that if you are going to live up to the hype that we're giving you right now, um, I would hope that by the end of preseason Don't that they it. would feel comfortable in rolling with you over those other guys. It doesn't matter. See, like that's that's another part of this brilliance is that it, it really doesn't matter. There is not a quarterback competition. The like we're doing a math problem, but we're working backwards. We already have the answer solved. The answer is two years. Derek Carr, Spencer Rattler. That's it. That's the answer. So whether the Saints say, you know what, let's not rush the progression. Let's let Nathan Peterman be the backup. Let's let Rattler dress just so he can get used to an NFL game day. Get used to being on field on the field. Get used to that whole thing. But, you know, if all hell breaks loose and Carr gets hurt, we'll go to Peterman. You know, we're not going to ruin Rattler to try and save a 7-10 and 10 season, right? So, in that sense, like, there, it, there really isn't a competition. There really isn't. Now, if Rattler looks fantastic in training camp and he, and he looks like the man and all that stuff, after this season going into the next season— that that changes things because then it's like okay well now we're confident in this guy he has developed he has taken all these steps over his first year so if Carr does go down or something happens all of a sudden now we don't we're we're confident he's going to step in and win like we're confident he's going to step in and he's going to be ready to roll again very similar to Patrick Mahomes and Alex Smith when when Patrick Mahomes was drafted by the Chiefs the conversation wasn't oh well if Alex Smith goes down in week one we're ready to roll with Patrick Mahomes. The conversation was: We know we have to develop this guy. We we have a we have a vision for him. We have we we're planning for the future. We'll see what happens. Okay, so don't don't rush this Rattler thing as a fan. Don't rush the idea of like I really want him to be the number two. Who cares? Don't worry about who's the two this year because best case scenario, Carr plays every game. Don't care if the Saints want Rattler to develop slower and they may make him the three. Totally fine with me. All right, so don't get caught up in like the depth chart. Don't get caught up in all that. I would say you definitely want him to be like involved. You want Rattler to be traveling. You want Rattler to be with the team. You want him to be on those on the sidelines. You want him to get those kind of reps. But I wouldn't I wouldn't be too concerned over you know if he's beating out Kellen Mond or or whatever ends up whoever whatever veteran ends up being on the roster. I completely agree because we've laid it out. The quarterback room for the Saints, I mean, Nathan Peterman, right? Yeah, we, We've seen what he's, I don't want to say capable of, but maybe not capable of yeah, when, yeah. when he's thrown in there, like in real action and not preseason action. Kellen Mond, he was thrown at the combine this year. Like, yeah. no disrespect to the guy. And, and disrespect to the guy. They're both garbage. Credit for you for doing whatever you got to do to get back into the league, but you were a combine arm yeah. this year, like this current combine. And Jay Kaner, we don't really know a lot about him. Um, obviously, he gets busted for PDs and yeah, I respect that. And it's never wrong to be strong. Any any time you get an opportunity to get busted for PDs, get busted for PDs. That's that's what I think. And has to sit out some time. And uh, we saw him a little I bit didn't in the preseason. Even know that about him. I forgot that. 
Right, first four games, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. uh, of last year. Bruh. He got popped like right after preseason yeah. or something, yeah. right? Love, like, love a lot that. of people were like, hey, you know, he did some nice things in preseason. Yeah. Maybe he could be your QB too, and then boom, done. What in the hell? What was Jake Hayner taking? That's what I'm saying. Good. Take whatever you can get your hands on. Looks like he's 10. I guess that's why he was taking it. Maybe yeah. uh, Maybe he would have looked eight without it. Yeah. I Trying mean, to take some, uh, some tea, maybe to just you know, you get some face hair or something. Yeah, there's something going on, dude. Uh, I just can't. Uh, every time I think of him, I think of the pictures the that he had. Yeah, the photo shoot. Yeah. photo shoot. But it is, yeah. our, it is the only Jake Mayer Hayner know. memory we really yeah. have. Yes. And he's, I think Hayner will go the route of the like Nick Mullins, players like that, who it's like, yeah, that could probably be a – you know, they could be a practice squad kind of guy, elevated for a random situation, but the ceiling is the ceiling isn't very high. And that's what I'm saying with Rattler is that the ceiling is higher. And and uh, look, not all ceilings are created equal. Like some players just have a higher ceiling, and there's certain players that just they cannot develop past a, a level. And it's okay to say like, yeah, Chase Daniels probably had a certain ceiling. Matt Flynn had a certain ceiling. Like Nick Mullins has a certain ceiling. Nick Mullins is never, ever, 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 ever going to develop into an all-pro starting quarterback, franchise quarterback. Bad news, bad news bears. Like, it sounds, and maybe I'm too, like, one and zero. Maybe, maybe I'm, like, what was that binary? Is, is the way, isn't that the phrase for it? The one and zeros in the machine? But maybe, in a computer, maybe I'm too, like, it's either this or this. Or, or like, I, I think I see it, certain players, like, I, I see very specifically, like, this guy can't play. This guy can't develop to this level. He might be good in a very small vacuum, but he's not a franchise quarterback. You know, if you showed me, if you named, if you threw 50 quarterbacks out there, I could tell you, like, this guy has what it takes to potentially be a franchise quarterback. This guy's a lifetime backup. This guy's a journeyman. This guy needs to be cut. You know, like, Ian Book first time I saw Ian Book, it's like, okay, well, I think we all can see this guy is not going to develop to a certain level. He does not have the capabilities. He doesn't have, to go back to a metaphor I used previously, he doesn't have the correct amount of clay to to mold to create the statue. You know, and that's why I'm out here with the mic. That's why I'm, I'm giving you all these golden tidbits because I can see through the narratives. I can see through that maybe this guy can do it. I can see through the... Let's give Kellen Mond a chance. I can see through all that. You know, I can see through the Josh Dobbs as a franchise quarterback. I, I bring that up because I got crucified for two weeks because I was on here saying that Josh Dobbs is garbage. And I had Minnesota fans in my DMs, in my YouTube comments, on Twitter, telling me that I was a fool because Josh Dobbs was their franchise quarterback. And two weeks later, Josh Dobbs is driving a Lyft and doing Uber Eats in Minnesota. Yeah, it's, it's a gift and a curse, ladies and gentlemen. He's a missing Lawrence brother. Who was it that texted the Rattler meme about him looking like he was the guy that they cast to play Patrick Mahomes in a movie about Travis Kelsey does. and Taylor Swift? He kind of does. Because yeah, we, they've, they've had a ton of those. There's another one. It was a like, perfect joke. There was another one. It was like, if you were asked to draw Patrick Mahomes from memory, like that's, <laughs> that's another one. They, they've had a lot. All right, we're going to cut the video there. Uh, thoughts and prayers, T's and P's with T-Bob's cough. I, I guess he's better now. Ladies and gentlemen, get on down in there in the comments below. Get on down. Let me know what you think about the Rattler thing. Let me know what you think about the vision, the idea, what we're talking about, the four-year plan. Get down in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video.